Hi, it's Anna Mason, and in this watercolour tip video, I wanted to unpack the colour mixing decisions I made when I painted this gorgeous magnolia flower. At a superficial glance, we might describe it as pink, but when we really look at it, we can see that even in one of the pink petals, we have a whole range of pinks. It can seem overwhelming to try and paint them all, but painting them all is vital to achieve realism. So let me show you how I match to these colours. I always work in the same order, beginning with the lightest colours, which you can see here. I start by selecting the paint in my palette I think is the closest to that one. This is where it really helps to have a wide selection of colours. In this case, I think the closest colour is Cobalt Violet, so this will be my base colour. But I think that that looks a little bit too blue, so let's look at the colour wheel. We want to keep the colour nice and bright, and we only need to shift it a fraction. So let's look to shift the colour away from blue, just a fraction, and try the colour that's next to it but closer to red. That's the Opera Rose. With the Opera Rose added in and the mix watered down a little more to keep it pale, I apply this mix as a layer to the pink petals. After painting in the branch, which was the darkest area of the whole composition, I paint the darkest tones in the petals, which are these rich purple pinks at the base of the petals. To match to those, I'll begin with some thick permanent rose, which seems to be about the closest I have in my palette to this colour. But when we look at it, it's not dark enough, and it's too vibrant and too red. So if we look at the colour wheel, I'll look to add one of the neutral colours, which will serve to mute the colour down and make it less vibrant. And because I know I want to darken the colour and shift it a little bit towards blue, Payne's Grey is my choice here. Though I'm only going to want to add a touch because it's such a dark colour that's going to easily overwhelm the permanent rose if we're not careful. I put the Payne's Grey on my palette to make it easier to get less of it on my brush, but then I still need to add in more permanent rose to the mix to balance it back and get the colour I'm looking for. I then apply this mix to the darkest tone areas, adding more of the permanent rose in as I work into the slightly lighter areas. As we look at the area that connects up to these darkest tones, we can see that it's a really vibrant, bright, purplish pink. So to match to that, I'll take Permanent Rose as my base colour, but as I look at it in the palette, it looks too red and not bright enough. If we look at it on the colour wheel, we can see that the colour needs to be shifted towards blue a little. The colour next to it, that's closer to blue and is also really bright, is Opera Rose, so I'm going to add that into the mix. I add in thick opera rose and water the mix down. Then I apply it to these darker mid-tone areas, adding in some cobalt violet where the colour was a little more purple pink and slightly lighter. After working on the darker end of the tonal range in the pink petals, now let's look at the lighter end again, at the colours just a little darker than the ones that we painted with our first layer, which you can see here. Because it's a really similar hue to the one that we used for our first layer, all I'm going to do is use the same two paints, but use them thicker and therefore darker. So that's Opera Rose with plenty of Cobalt Violet. And I then apply this to everywhere except the lighter areas. After working on the lighter and darker ends of the petals tonal range, it's time to bring them together with the middle and work on the mid-tones, which you can see here. They still have a purple-pink vibrant glow to them, so to apply them, I'm going to use the same Cobalt Violet and Opera Rose mix again, this time applying it as a third layer to these mid-tone sections. I then watered this same mix down some more and applied it over the lightest tone areas again, everywhere that needed to be a little darker, leaving just a few gaps through to the lightest tone mix from the first layer. Once that's done, I went on to paint the buff-coloured petals. Because the way that we perceive colours depends on the colours we see around them, it was then time to go back in and make some tonal adjustments. Working on the darkest tones again, and the lightest tones again, and repeating this until I felt that the flower was complete. I hope that's shown you just how important it is to really closely observe the colours in your subjects, and also shown you a method for matching colours. Of course, colour matching is so much easier if you really know your paints, so I recommend you spend some time experimenting with them at different consistencies in your sketchbook soon.
A full video tutorial of this magnolia flower is available now in my online school. If you've enjoyed this tip video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'd love it if you'd share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to take one of my tried and tested video classes for free, hop on over to animationart.com where you'll find even more resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Remember, you won't improve your painting unless you make the time to paint. So be sure to schedule in some me time to paint something you love this week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another tip for creating watercolours with WOW. There are just so many colours! <laughs>